Um, we'll go to the next one. Um, this is Jai Jitya. He is going to talk about a um, KDE, uh, Wiki client, right? Yeah. For learning. Um, go ahead. Yeah. We're kind of a bit behind, so hurry up. So. This is my uh, project for the GSOC 2016. The name is the Wiki to Learn Desktop Client. So, first of all, what is Wiki to Learn? The Wiki to Learn is a collaborative textbooks and a initiative taken by KD peoples and open source contributors. It is entirely run by volunteers like me and you people. Our goal is to create uh, easily available textbooks for higher school educations and. Uh, so that people can easily study uh, mathematics and other complicated subjects easily. Contents are written by, uh, by both students and professors. Initially, the contents are usually written by students when they are learning for, for their exams or studying for a test. And professors, when they get time, they review uh, those uh, notes. So why was the client needed? Uh, the initial, we believe in knowledge only grows if shared. The problem with Wiki to Learn was that it was only available as a website. There was no uh, application for it on Android devices or any other platform. So in order to reach as many platforms, uh, we needed a cross-platform client. So we decided to use the Qt framework for it. The technology that uh, we have used are uh, the Qt framework to build the UI and perform the cross-platform ability to uh, on all the platforms. C++ is used for the backend and it mostly perform all the logic for the client, uh, like downloading images and maintaining connection with database and querying the API. Uh, the next is JavaScript and QML. Uh, JavaScript and QML is used for uh, creating the UI for the application. Uh, like because the Qt widgets are not really compatible with uh, on Android devices or mobile devices. So we have used the QML and Qt Quick along with JavaScript to create the UI for it. And the next is SQLite database uh, to keep the record of all the information uh, that we have, like uh, how many images are downloaded and whether the page is uh, fully synced with uh, Wiki to learn or not. So development phase. I started by reading the Qt documentations. I actually, I was not familiar with Qt. So I started by reading documentation, practiced some code, uh, tried some of the, uh, of the examples. Uh, then I head over to the Wiki to learn API, uh, read their documentations again, perform some queries uh, on browsers by uh, making simple HTTP requests using JavaScripts, and uh, I usually uh, perform a query and get back JSON, then parse it to see the HTML pages. So I was playing with the thing. When I was confident enough, I started to build a prototype for it. So this uh, is the initial prototype for it. As you can see, uh, it's very simple uh, UI in the beginning. It's currently can save page, uh, lo uh, load a local page that was saved. It can uh, delete a page, it can update a page. Uh, like simple uh, button, uh, button UI. So it was just a prototype. Even for the adding a page, you have to uh, click another pop-up for the add page and then manually had to uh, write a name. Like I am uh, was writing that time. So uh, even uh, the spelling of the page had to be correct, or uh, it would not be able to form a proper query for the API, and it download will fail. See, uh, I am just copying the names of the pages and providing it to the the prototype of it. So the, uh, even it, it was a prototype. Uh, it actually was performed. The uh, was able to perform the some pretty basic stuff really good, like downloading all the images and dependencies of a page. Uh, some some pages were not able to uh, display properly because Wikitool API didn't provide the CSS for it. So I had to find a way to find uh, the necessary CSS for it. So currently I'm loading a local page that is saved uh, in a file system and I'm browsing through it. So if you notice this page is saved often and it pretty much look exactly same as the web version of it. Except the CSS part because the Wikitool and API did not provide the CSS uh, needed for it. So 
So this page had a lot of dependencies and all the images were in SVG. So I act actually had to make all the queries uh, to all the images, then convert them to PNG and then uh, download it locally. An entry was also made in the database to keep track of how many images were actually saved or not. Because sometimes it happens like uh, you don't have a good internet connection, some download may fail. So for that reason, I have a uh, database for it. So deleting a page, I had to ex uh, write the ID for the page. Uh, it was too much manual. Uh, it was not at all user friendly. You have to provide an ID to of a page, then it will make a query to the database. And if it, a record is found, it will delete it from the file system and from the database entry too. So the challenges that I faced at the prototype was uh, making a cross-platform UI. As you have seen, the UI was really bad. Uh, it was not at all usable for, even for a normal desktop system. Uh, and the uh, UI had to be cross-platform for the mobile devices too. And saving pages offline with all the dependencies. Like I said, Wikitone API didn't provide the CSS or the JavaScript needed to display the pages. So I have to find a way uh, to get all that data somehow. Uh, next was making the search feature. As you have seen in the prototype, I had to type the name of the pages, then click on save page, then it was able to save a page, which is ex not at all user friendly. It had to be like a Google search, like we type a page, it displays the result to us, and then show, uh, take us to the page that we need. Next was the uh, internal changes uh, inside our organization. Because wiki to learn was still in the beginning stages, there was a lot of changes with the API at that time. So every day there was uh, some changes with the API, and I had to uh, redo some of the work to make my client compatible with the API. Now comes the version 1.0. So this is the home screen, the current version of wiki to learn desktop client. Uh, as you can see, it is uh, pretty much better from the last prototype. It has a home screen, a side panel where you can perform all the actions, and it's cross-platform too. So it currently is on Linux, and it has the same uh, UI in the Android devices too, and works same too, uh, exactly same. So the client architecture, uh, how does the, my client work? The client is uh, Wikitolan client act, act as a middleware. Uh, it m makes a GET and POST request to Wikitolan API, fetches the data from the API, gets a JSON back, and then passes that JSON to uh, get back the HTML from it. And when that uh, shows that in a web view. And if a user decides to save a page, it will uh, again make a query to the API, uh, save all the images in a file system, and make an entry into a database. And that pretty much is how uh, the Wikitolan, uh, that is the architecture of the client. So let's see uh, the demo of the client now. So as I said, this is the home screen of the application. So I have started by making a search of one-time pad. Uh, some of you might be familiar with it. One-time pad is a, a cryptographic term uh, pro, uh, used for encrypting a message or and, uh, files also. So last time, if you've seen in the prototype, I had to explicitly type the exact name for the search, and it was used to save page. But now there's a search feature embedded in it. So the, I have liked this page. So I'm going to save this page offline in my local file system. So uh, how does the application decide? Like, because it is a cross platform application, we need to somehow find out where will be the public directory of that particular OS. For example, for Windows, it is in uh, uh, common directory, public directory, and documents. For Linux, it might be different. And for Android, it is different. So that thing have to be uh, founded uh, by a finding a standard part for all of it. So what I did was uh, write a uh, small piece of code that used to detect the OS type, and then found the common part where the file should be saved. Like for in my case, it was in shared uh, directory. 
and these are the current uh, the saved pages in an offline uh, in my file system. As you can see, the pages have the IDs, not exact the name, because uh, there are chances that a uh, page. Uh, might have same name, but their IDs will always be unique. So I decided to keep uh, the uh, files with their IDs instead of their names. But when you will see uh, the pages in your client, it will be with the uh, name of the pages so that uh, you may not get confused. So the next try something uh, different, uh, difficult page. So this page had a lot of images and SVGs with it. And now let's see how it will uh, save it. So I clicked on Save Offline button. And now currently it's downloading all the images and making entry in the databases. Here you can manage your saved pages. Uh, suppose uh, they, you might want to update your pages. Uh, there's a revision ID with uh, every page attached. It will check into the local database, then make a query to the Wikitool and API. And if see the revision number matches, uh, it will not uh, do anything. But if it changes, it will uh, delete all the old data and then again download the new data and save it in your file system. So I have deleted yes. one page. So that's pretty much how the uh, client works. Now I'm demonstrating uh, the page in an offline mode. I've disconnected my internet uh, to demonstrate how the page will look in an offline mode. So it has, uh, it looks exactly same. It has all the CSS and all the images with it. So it can now work with even uh, when you don't have internet connection. Just uh, save the pages that you like and read it on the go. And So how you can actually contribute to it? So I would suggest uh, starting by uh, going to the Git uh, repository and cloning it onto your system, download Qt framework and configure it, and build the client locally on your system. The good thing about the client is, is it's very generic. The way I have coded it is that if you want to make your own client for it, suppose uh, you have your own wiki, uh, like KD has their own uh, uh, version of media wiki that they use for doc making documentation. Uh, if some developer like to make a client for it too, he can ju he would just uh, download the code. He will just change some of the API links and some regular expressions, and the client will work sa flawlessly same for that client too. And for example, you take the Wikia, uh, the online fandom site, which uses the modified version of MediaWiki. So if you have access to Wikia API, just make a queries to API, uh, get yourself familiar with the Wikia API. Then make some changes with the client, like making queries and database. Then it will work for the Wikia too. So it's quite generic. It can uh, work with most of the uh, sites that uses MediaWiki API. So I have tried it with, even with Wikipedia, and it works fine too. And please uh, join Wikia to learn in general. Uh, please, uh, they have a very good initiative for it.
So you can actually contribute uh, in another way too. If you are not with good with coding, you can actually do the translations or write your own courses on Wikidoo. Thank you.